Welcome everybody. Um, my name is Jen Arbo and I work for the City of New Westminster and you are at today's VEN session and VEN stands for Virtual Education and Networking Nights. Uh, this is our ninth VEN and we're very pleased today to have Rachel Flood as our presenter. Um, she, we'll be getting to Rachel's talk in just a moment but I wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping and announcements before we get there. Um, so first I'd like to recognize and respect that New Westminster is on the unceded and unsurrendered land of the Halkamalan speaker people. Um, as a city, we acknowledge that colonialism has made invisible their histories and their connections to the land, and we're learning and building relationships with the people whose land we're on. Myself, personally, I'm on a journey of listening and learning and hoping to do a better job with everything related to truth and reconciliation as I learn and undo all of the colonial history in my life. Um, I would also like to let you know that normally this is the point in the presentation I would let you know what our next event is, but I don't have one scheduled. So if you have a suggestion or a topic that you'd like for us to consider for our next event, which should take place in two months, um, please just send me a message in the chat or you can email me. After this session, I'll be sending up all of the follow-up resources and materials, including uh, some of the items that Rachel will be talking about, as well as a link to the recording. And uh, I'll also make sure that you have my email address so that if you do have a suggestion, you can email me if you'd like. So with that, I'm just going to make sure there's no participants waiting to come in or not. Fantastic. So I'd like to present uh, Rachel Flood. Rachel is a technology enthusiast, an operations consultant, and an enterprise architect with 15 years of experience in both the profit and the nonprofit setting. Rachel is an adept systems thinker who believes data-driven decision-making is the cornerstone of a high-impact business or organization. And with that, I'd like to welcome Rachel. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad uh, that you're here. And if you're uh, catching the replay, I hope that you find it as uh, useful as well. Um, I think I'm just gonna dive right into sharing my screen here. Okay, so uh, so here we are, Systems Thinking 101, and um, in this session, we're going to learn a little bit about what a system is, what a business system is, and what uh, systems thinking is. There's two parts to this uh, workshop that I've got. The first one is practicing the concept of systems thinking with visualizations, and then the next section will be um, uh, my spin on systems thinking, uh, where we start to think about the software and the processes that you have in play in your organization. So jumping right in, what is a system? So if you go to Google, you get a pretty good definition of a system. It's a set of things working together as part of a mechanism or an interconnected network, like a railway system. Um, it's also a set of principles or procedures uh, according to which something is done, an organized framework or a method, so like a public school system. So for our purposes, what is a business system? So a business system is the combination of the tools and processes at play in an organization, team, or project. Um, and that's any tools or processes at play. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good system. Any, any combination of those things is a system. So what is a good system? A good business system is one where all the tools and processes are working well together towards a common goal. Um, sorry, I gotta move this over a little bit so I can see better. And I really like this gift that I found that it really shows um, uh, a system working together. So what you have is these little gems that come over here into the strategy brain um, and it creates the go juice to make the social media stuff happen. And then it goes out to the world and the data is collected here and it goes through some processes once it's here to create these gems for the strategy. And the part that we're going to focus on in this uh, workshop is, is this data one. How can we make sure that the data you need to know where you're at and what you might need to adjust um, is getting to the right places. So this is a system working all towards the common goal of making good content. So in your business, this looks like any paper processes that you have, as well as your computer-based pro processes, any analyzation processes, and any on the ground in the field work. So it's all the stuff working together. 
So um, in that, what is systems thinking? So sy systems thinking is a way of making sense of the complexity of the world by looking at it holistically in terms of relationships rather than splitting it down into its uh, separate parts. Uh, so uh, let me go back actually. What we're gonna do is instead of looking at all the different processes you have in your business separately, we're gonna try and uncover all these connections um, that, that are present within, within your business. And I do find that a really good way to, um, to show systems thinking is through a cautionary tale about air dropping cats, uh, which is actually a true story <laughs> that happened in the 1950s. So in the 1950s, the island of Borneo had a terrible outbreak of malaria. Um, and so they got on the phone and they called the World Health Organization and the WHO said, okay, we know what causes that. It's mosquitoes. And we have a ready-made plan for how to address the mosquito problem. And that is to spray it with DDT because they were pushing it pretty hard back then. Um, and so they, that's what they did. They sprayed the entire island with DDT and that worked all right for the mosquitoes. They all died and the malaria went down, but there were some unintended consequences from spraying an entire island with poison. Shocking, I know. The first one was a bit unexpected, these beautiful thatch roofs that the decay people of the Borneo Island uh, were living with started collapsing on their heads. Why is that? Because the DDT also killed a parasitic wasp that ate the hungry, hungry caterpillars that like to eat the thatch that they used in their roofs. Another consequence was the geckos. They didn't kill the geckos because the geckos actually thought DDT was good for them and it didn't kill them. But what it did kill was the cats who ate the geckos. And when you kill the cats, the rats come to play, and when the rats come to play, they bring the plague and they destroyed their food stores. So they got on the phone and they called the WHO again, and the World Health Organization said, oh, well, we don't have a ready-made solution for rats. Why don't we drop some cats, airdrop some cats onto the island of Borneo? Um, and you'll recall that Borneo did have cats before they killed them with the DDT geckos. So in essence, Systems thinking is always asking, what about the cats? So in that, how do you do that? How do you think about the cats? How do you pull out the different cats that you might need to consider in your business? And that is, it takes practice. And what it takes practice particularly is it takes practice in visualization. Visualizing the way things work together is the backbone to systems thinking because it can give you a big, a better picture of what is actually going on. And so that's what we're going to do together right now. We are going to practice some systems thinking. And so what we're going to do is an activity that is um, basically this activity from this TED talk that I found from Tom Wujic called um, how to drawing drawing how to make toast can solve your wicked problems it's an excellent ted talk it'll be in the resources you get at the end of the session in the email from jen so i do recommend that you check it out uh, beautiful design act, uh, design activity um, and it's great all of the stuff i'm going to walk you through today is really excellent team building activities um, you're going to pull out information that you never would be able to do on your own so i do recommend that you take a look at the ted talk and you can take them through the activities that i uh, outlined here to uh, to build out some some team input all right so the first thing that we're going to do is we're, you're going to take five minutes to draw toast. You're going to take your sticky notes or your index cards if you have them. Otherwise, you can use a piece of paper and you're going to draw how to make toast without any words, just pictures. So you're going to think of your uh, toast making as a series of nodes. So action points um, and connections. So just a little arrow or a flow of how you're going to get from one to the next. Uh, OK, so you can take uh, five minutes to do that. I am going to stop sharing so I can be back in the room when I'm over there. I'm all by myself with my slides and <laughs> you can see what we're at. I'm going to set a little timer. We got five minutes. I'll check in at about three minutes and see if folks do need some more time. Otherwise, we can we can dive in. After this, we're going to go into breakout rooms. Um, and I don't know how many people are here right now, but I think we could do yeah, there's there's two. six folks, so we Perfect. can do groups of two, three, 
of two. Perfecto. Hi, Victoria. Uh, so the pre exercise right now is you're going to try and draw a picture of how you're going to how to make toast without using any words at all. So just some pictures um, describing the action of, you know, where do you get the bread and it goes in the toaster, whatever, however you think that you would explain to someone how to make toast without using any words. Uh, we're practicing visualization um for systems thinking because it's a big it's, a, it's the backbone of the idea of being able to visualize a process We got about two minutes left. The, do folks need a little bit more time? You can drop more time in the chat. Yeah, more time from Max. Okay, <laughs> we'll use the whole five minutes to get this exercise done. Uh, I just don't want people sitting there being like, "I oh, will finish." So <laughs> uh, happy to let you work that out. It's a. It is such a great TED talk. He's a. He's a good speaker too. So good to check out. So it's about one minute left. Let's start finishing up. Eight thirty seconds left. It's so different when you're not in the room. <laughs> one day, one day. Yeah, I'd like to think that we'll be doing some in-person options uh, at one of these in the future. Mm -hmm. I do love the hybrid model. They are technically a little bit more tricky to make sure that everyone is included, but I definitely want to see them. Okay, we got that. Five minutes is up. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, okay, so 
Now we're going to go into breakout rooms. And in your breakout rooms, each person is going to explain their toast diagram to the other. And you're going to discuss how you might be able to combine your diagrams. There's probably steps that you missed or uh, perspective you didn't consider or things that can go together. Obviously, this is harder to do when you're in virtual space, but let's get a bit creative. Uh, we're going to do another five minute uh, breakout room. And uh, so it's two and a half minutes each if one person has a phone handy um, or maybe Jen can drop in the chat. I'm not I've been there where people have done that before, but um, we'll try to give you a warning at the halfway mark. Um, but yeah, you just want to explain your toast diagram and then talk about how you can combine your two diagrams. So we're going to send you off to your breakout rooms. There we go. All right. Uh, and I can do a message to them. So I'm going to pause the recording. Share my screen again. Okay. So, is everybody back? I can't see. Um, I want to let everybody gather. Not quite. They've all, they've been given this like sixty second warning, so they'll be back yeah. any moment. All right. When everyone's back, I want uh, to know what you learned. We're still waiting for two more. Having a good jam. They're obviously having a good jam. Exactly. <laughs> Well, it automatically closes, so they don't have a lot of choice. There you go. We'll grab them. <clears throat> Welcome, Victoria and Angela. By the way, I saw you both joined, so nice, nice to have you here. I'm glad you're made, that you were able to make it. All right, here they are. So, back over to you, Rachel. All right. So now that you're back from your uh, breakout rooms, I'd like you to consider and potentially share if you feel up to it. Um, anything that you learned, what was interesting about the differences between your diagrams? And what did you learn about how different people think about the same process? Does anyone feel like sharing some interesting thoughts or ideas that came from talking about about toast together? Somebody's got a uh, take off. Uh, okay, Max. Oh, wait, no, I saw Angela raise her hand up before you oh. can please go ahead and go. <laughs> no, I think Angela has to leave. She just dropped a little note in the yeah, you get a replay, Angela. So no worries. Uh, all right, Max. I was just gonna say I thought it was very interesting. Uh, Sean and I were chatting about um, kind of our systems and uh, they started thinking about it, uh, like I felt like I was thinking about it early because I, I included, oh, I have to go to the grocery store and pay the money to get this bread. Mm -hmm. um, but Sean talked about uh, getting the wheat to make the bread, mm -hmm. to mix Even the bread, to, to mix the dough, to put it in the oven, then you have bread mm -hmm. that you can then toast. So I thought it was really interesting to kind of uh, reset my view or idea of what like early in that process might look like but also just connecting the two pieces where you could almost like lay our two pieces on top together. of each other and they would become a whole system yeah so I, I just thought that was a very very interesting way it worked out there Excellent. Well, that so if you do check out the TED talk, that's exactly what Tom talks about is that when you bring other people into this kind of process mapping, you find you get a better map because you get more perspectives in the room and you can combine things and you get uh, you just get a, a juicier picture because everybody has a different perspective to bring. Uh, so I, uh, on that, thank you so much, Max, for sharing. I know it's not always easy to do, so I very much appreciate that. Okay, so moving on to step three now, I want you to try and take a stab at drawing your business, your department, your project, your team, whatever it is you're considering um, in this workshop, uh, draw how it works. What are the important pieces? How do they fit together? How does your community or customers engage with you? And then how do they become customers, clients, or donors? Fit it all in, be as messy as you need to be if you're using sticky notes, use a wall. Um, however you wanna do that, I'm gonna give you uh, 
10 minutes. I'm going to stop uh, at five minutes and check and see if people still need some more time. Uh, but yeah, dig in, get as messy as you need to, all the pieces fitting together. Um, how does it all work?
about five minutes. If people still need a bit more time, go ahead and drop more time into the chat or just nod at me if your camera's on. <laughs> yeah, folks need a bit more time. Okay, we'll keep going. You got about two minutes left. Your one minute warning. Thirty seconds. <clears throat> Finishing up. All right, so now that you've taken that offer to kick at the can at drawing your uh, your uh, business or enterprise project, um, one of the things that always comes out is that it's really complicated. It's hard to get it all there. Um, what I'd like you to do now is to get into uh, breakout groups again. We're going to do one group of two and one group of three. We'll do six minutes so everybody gets two minutes and the one group of two will have a little bit extra time. 
so what you're going to do is just take an opportunity to try and explain your diagram again. It's harder to do because you're in a virtual space. Um, but if you can turn your camera to show or just explain, um, take a couple of minutes to do that. And then think about what's similar or different between the way you've, you've all drawn your, uh, your enterprises um, and if there's any connections or nodes that were common amongst you. So we're going to jump into breakout rooms now and we'll come back in six minutes. We'll give you a two minute warning when it's time to switch. Next time I do this, I'll give myself a little space in my slides so that I can have the gallery open and still see, <laughs> see the people see the slides. <clears throat> Yeah, it's tough if you're only working off of one screen. Yeah, I normally have two. So in the bedroom here, you're limited, limited resources. <laughs> I was telling Jen, Victoria, my cat, I have a two doors to my balcony. So he came out the other door and is at the closed door. And he's like, I, what's happening? Why can't I come in? <laughs> I'm like, go to the other door. <laughs> As you do. Animals are great. They yeah. are. We just have a puppy we have a 10 month old nine nine and a half month old um bernadoodle so he's like oh. 75 pounds wow and he's just a puppy like it's crazy oh it's been yeah it's been fun but um yeah they make he makes me laugh like what a goofball it's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so everybody's back. And if there is one brave volunteer again who wants to maybe share some things that they learned, differences, similarities to approach, anything you found challenging or easy, um, feel free to just unmute yourself and jump in. If not, Jen is going to. Oh, Chelsea wants to. Yay! There we go. <laughs> it wasn't working. No um, I think in our group, one thing that um, I noticed right off the hop is the different career paths and different roles make for this assignment to be completely 360 from one to the other. You know, you're if you look at more of a technical, um, like what Max was saying, and and then Stephen comes in with the art side and and just like the processes from them. And then, you know, I come in with a completely different, like the outreach and in, in the social mm -hmm. service side, um, the similarities I'd say are just looking at, you know, the people that end up um, having such a big hand in the entirety, um, but the processes themselves are completely different. And that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show people is that, again, everybody's going to have a different way of doing this and everybody's going to have a different approach to what a process is and what a system is. So the more you can do this kind of work with the people you're working with, not only will you get really good at what your processes are, but you'll get to understand how they think. You'll get to understand how the people that you work with are processing the world. So it's just such a great um systems thinking exercise but it's also really good team building because you get to like get some key insights into who it is that you're spending your time with when you're working so the other thing is this is how you can find your cats <laughs> usually when you draw out a process you've got it like tidied up little bit in your head and then someone else's perspective is like brings in maybe a cat that you missed that you have to airdrop in because you've only got your own limited perspective so um and again this is just a really great um opportunity to pull up stuff that you wouldn't have found um on your own and without visualizing it so like even just writing things out in the list it's a very linear way of doing um, uh, writing things out or figuring things out. So if you can turn it on its ear and start drawing things, you're going to pull up some cats probably. The other thing that I wanted to say again is together is always better. So like Bill and I says, when you work together, when you think together, good things are going to happen. So always remember when you're doing anything to do with process that involves other people, make sure they're at the table. 
because you're not going to get it all on your own. I'm going to just do a quick two minute break here so we can come back into the second half um, a little bit refreshed. Um, the second half of this workshop is where I turn Tom's act activity into my own. And we're going to focus on your enterprise from a software and data perspective, because I like to nerd out that way. So turn off your cameras, stretch, have a minute to decompress. I'm going to just do a quick two minute break and then we'll be back. We'll hear the bing, da ding, ding, and uh, that'll be that. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm just going to dive back in here. So like I said, we're going to talk about software nodes and data connections in this next section. So in the making toast exercise, you learn to consider processes as a series of nodes and connections. So let's build on it to create your own systems maps. You're going to go from your toast map to something that looks a bit like this. It's not going to look exactly like this because I do use a program called LucidChart to do this. They do a free version. So go ahead and check it out if you find that's exciting to you, if you're a nerd like me. <laughs> but don't worry about what the shapes look like or anything like that. We're just going to dive in to creating the systems map, which will show you how the tools, so the software tools you're using and your processes are working together or not working together. And it will give you a clear understanding of what, what you need to prioritize for improvements. And namely, we're gonna highlight some of your manual entry data connections and some other um, aspects of the map. So diving back into your pen and paper here, we're going to redraw your business project or department or team. This time, thinking of your nodes as the different software tools that, you're, that you currently have uh, in, in use. If it's whatever form or a spreadsheet or email, whatever it happens to be, try and, uh, and uh, use those as your nodes. And then the connections is how the data flows through that. And what I mean, um, or a good way to start is to think about how do your people connect with you and how does that data move through your different software tools to where it's going to be saved for future reference or for reporting? So for example, let's say someone purchases something from your store, online store cart. That transaction is going to end up in your accounting system. So how does that happen? Is it a person that's putting it there? Is it an integration? Um, but also you're going to use that for like sales forecasting. Is it a time of year that people are uh, looking to buy more things? So however your people are connecting with you, if they're donors or clients or however it is, is it email? Is it a form on your website? How are they first getting in touch with you over the phone, whatever it may be, and follow that through to where it gets saved. One of the things you want to uh, make sure that you take note of is where you're relying on manual entry to move that data from one place to another. Where is it a human has to take the data from one place and put it into another place? So that can look like, uh, for example, let's say you have an application to a program that you run, that you have a form that people fill out. And then later, someone is going through the information in those forms and creating some demographic statistics that you might put in a newsletter or in an annual report. So that is a manual effort report building. And then where does that report end up living? Is it in a spreadsheet on a server somewhere in OneDrive, Google Drive, wherever? So try to highlight where the where it's a manual entry. And then you want to take note of what data ends up where and if it represents a full picture or not. So someone emails you to ask about something and get involved in, in your work. Does that contact end up in a customer relationship management tool or in a spreadsheet or does it just live in your outlook and then you have to kind of forward those information to other people so try and take a picture of where is it landing and is it a full picture is it don't does everybody have a little bit of stakeholder information on their on their email um, and not in a in a shared tool so try and think about where it's ending up and if it's a full picture or not here's an example from my client work <clears throat> so with this organization they have various stakeholders that get in touch with them. So some donors are donating through their website or through Canada Helps or Givergy. They have funders that get in touch, mostly over Outlook, uh, email. Some other stakeholders are also getting in touch in email. And then they have these participants that are filling out an application form through Formstack, which is the information from Formstack is then manually entered into their MailChimp. There's no integration available, so they they 
copy the information and put it into MailChimp for their newsletters. They also manually entering the uh, participants into these two other platforms that they use to do their work. Um, and throughout, there's some um, manual report building done here. Like I said, they pull some demographic information out of the information from their applications and they build various reports that live in multiple documents in multiple locations across their organization. Um, and so you wanna think about where are all these places that, that your information is living. So the key parts of this map are the manual entry points and then your incomplete data. So there's, a, if in this case, there's some uh, stakeholder data that just stays in Canada Helps that they have to go and reference later if they want it. And then sometimes it ends up in Salesforce and sometimes it doesn't because it's a very manual process. The other piece for this organization is they had multiple documents in multiple locations. So they had some of it was on OneDrive, some of it was in Dropbox, some of it's in Google Drive, and even some of it was in Asana. So they had fragmented intellectual property. And that just means that there's little bits of information spread throughout their domain. There's some on people's local machines. There's some in all these different servers. So those are the key points of this map for our purposes today is where are your manual entry points and where do you have information that's kind of broken up all over your uh, enterprise. So we're gonna have 10 minutes for you to take a crack at it. Don't worry about getting it perfect. You can always come back and do this again. But the idea is to really think about what software are people using how, and where's your data ending up? Do they talk to each other or does a human have to make all of the connections um, throughout, the, throughout the work that you're doing? So I'm gonna set the timer again for 10 minutes and I'll check in at five and make sure people are feeling okay. And if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat, which there's three there that I didn't see. Ah, Lucichart, thank you for answering. <laughs> So if you are watching this at home, uh, this is a good opportunity later. Uh, this is a good opportunity for you to pause the YouTube recording because I'm going to also pause our recording. So the 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes of dinner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and pause it. Okay, it's about 10 seconds left. So if we can finish up and come on back. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at that diagram that you made and turn it into a roadmap for improvements. What you're going to do is you're going to take a pen, maybe a colored pen, and circle every manual effort connection you have. Every single place where it's a human that has to move the data from one place to another, go ahead and circle those. You're also going to take a colored pan if you got it and circle all the fragmented or incomplete data that you have. This is your priority areas for improvement. This is thankfully very easy to correct if you put some dedicated time into it. There's lots of integrations out there that can allow software to talk to each other. It takes a bit of research and testing it out, but there's lots of natively built ones where the software use already has a, a, a pathway for your, your data to move. <clears throat> and there's third party ones like Zapier that can do it. So um, that's one way. And then if you have fragmented data, you can also have that data flow over integrations or just reduce the number of places that you have information stored. So your map's going to look like this a little bit. This is from that same client example. They had all these manual effort areas where we spent some time and figured out like what do we need to change in order to make sure that a human with a beautiful big giant brain does not need to do data entry because we have better things to do with our lives than move data from one software tool to another and if you're relying on a single staff person to do that they're only staying because they like you um it's a very uh it's a terrible job nobody likes it so there's no reason for it to happen in today's software market. There's tons of integrations. Integrations is the name of the game. Um, and also your incomplete data can also be solved with integrations or just reducing the number of places that it can be stored. And so some of that is deciding we're going to just use OneDrive. We're going to just use Google Drive or whatever it is. It doesn't matter, but pick one and stick to it. Maybe two. But if you have two, make sure there's an integration 
some sort of connection so that your data isn't so fragmented and so that your beautiful humans aren't wasting their brain power on data entry. So we're going to go into breakout rooms one more time. I think it's an even number again. Um, so two minutes, quick explanation of your map and, and I, mostly where you're going to focus your energies. What, what came up to the surface about where it is that you might need to uh, get your magnifying glass and really focus some energy. So we're going to jump into those breakout rooms in a minute here. Once I didn't give Jen the heads up, so <laughs> she's getting it going right now. <laughs> Excellent. So go ahead and join those rooms and two minutes each. So we'll be back in four minutes. There we go. Yes, big empty space. They were supposed to be a gift there. <laughs> uh, all right, friends. I kind of shut, cut off there, but I was going to say to Max, like if, um, if there, yeah, like it sounds like if there's one place where all of that information is stored, at least at, at the very beginning, before you try and change everything or like change the whole uh, system of manual entry, at, at the very least, all of that information being shared in one location to start and then rehashing how that, how it's, how it's not working, but like, <laughs> To make to make what is happening now more accessible, and then figure out how to make it work after. That was my. That yeah, totally well, that, no, and that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> my advice. Is this is the really low hanging fruit? If you can, if you can at least just get stuff saved in one server. Like if you can at least just get stuff in one place, then you can start to think about your processes to getting it there. Um, and, and, or if you're like more like, I want to see how I can get the tools to talk, then that's a great way to do it too. But picking one location for things to end up in information end up in is a great place to start. Um, does anyone else want to share something that they learned from this experience? Victoria jumped in with some great feedback. I got to hire you. That's what I realized. <laughs> well, there's so, there I are some really things at the end that <laughs> they're you like, you need to just there. hire somebody. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's a, a part of it too, right? Like it just recognizing that you need support in, in this part um, is a big step forward too, right? So um, I do have lots of ways that you can engage with me. There's a few that I'll uh, throw out at the end of this. Um, but yeah, so anybody else want to share? Max? I'll share a little bit more. I, um, one of the, what, what Victoria was commenting on was I, I realized in trying to map this out, it was coming out smaller than I felt like it should be. And I, and I couldn't figure out what it is that I was missing. Um, but it turns out, I think my current assessment is that we have one very small system that worked for a while and so now that very, very small system loop is implemented in a ton of different places, which means that all of this information that we might, so basically it's manual entry and slash or form submission into a spreadsheet. Which spreadsheet? Don't know. Who knows? What drive is it on? Mine, the organizations, my coworkers, someone who hasn't worked here for four years, we don't know, but it's on one of those somewhere and just like repeat ad nauseum. Yeah. Um, and then we do utilize some other tools. Like we have a, Zap, a few Zapier integrations that we utilize um, that I know about. I'm sure there's more that I don't, um, but, and there's like a little bit of Asana usage depending on which department you are and how comfortable you are with Asana and how much your supervisor makes you use it. And so, you know, it's, it was just really interesting to see that it feels so big, but really it's one problem. And if we can figure out a place to put that information, even if it ends up being in more than one place, for example, a CRM, in addition to, you know, some things living in Google Sheets, how they should, um, or living in a CRM, how they should, uh, you know, as long as it's the appropriate tool and everyone knows what it is, then it makes the system, I feel like, feel more closed and smaller than it necessarily, like, is or simpler than it necessarily is, if that makes sense. It's kind of my impression. 
Yeah. And the, so the, the big learning that I've come to in all my years in doing this for people is that it doesn't actually matter what system you use, as long as you make agreements with people about that, that's the system you're going to use and that you, 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 you circle back. Is it working? <laughs> right. Um, most people do things because this is how they've always done them. And it really just takes a bit of stepping back and being like, why are we doing it this way? And is there a better way? And when you start asking those questions, you start to create a healthy process culture in your group organization or whatever it is that to people that you're working in. People feel empowered to think about how things are being done and empowered to bring forward solutions for how they might be able to be done better. So, and on that note, <laughs> let's go and make this roadmap real. So what I want you to do is open your calendar and make a half hour event, recurring half hour event every week called operations planning. Do it right now. And in the description of that event, I want you to write down all the places that you highlighted with your circles as things that you want to consider improving. The other key part of this is don't skip or reschedule these events. Give yourself a month to settle in in like a time frame that works well, but find one. Find a half hour a week that you can dedicate to operations planning. This is as important as having a bookkeeper. This is as important as doing your taxes. This is key to being sustainable and being, if you want to scale, I don't know, not everybody does, but to have sustainable work, you need to pay as much attention to how you're doing the work as you do to what you're doing. So if I can give you a gift today, <laughs> that is this reoccurring event, once a week, half hour a week, an hour would be better, but half hour a week, <laughs> <laughs> every week at the same time do not reschedule this it is your sacrosanct time it is important it's key it's very very fundamental to having a healthy organization the more people you can include in those sessions the better because like i said the more you you can cultivate a process culture the your processes will get better over time rather than getting entrenched over time. What Max was talking about is an entrenched system. Nobody knows exactly why they do it that way. Nobody knows exactly how it's really functioning, but everybody's doing it because this is just the way that we've been doing it. And there's no conversation about how, why, why are we doing it? What, why, what is the point? So if you can start to create in your own work life, regular time to review how you're doing your work, you're just going to get better at doing your work over time. I know it sounds like a lot and I do actually recommend that it be an hour, but half hour is fine <laughs> to start. And then write in there the list of the things you circled because that this is super low hanging fruit. And it's a really good way to start thinking about how your processes all work together. So I'm going to show you what I did for this client that I was circling all the manual entry stuff <laughs> before. <clears throat> so if you recall, let's go back. Bing, bing, bing. Oops. So we had a whole bunch of different places for stuff to live. We had a whole bunch of manual entry going on um, and a lot of fragmented and incomplete information. So when we come back to this guy, what we did is put this down. <clears throat> we decided that the, a lot of the information that was being manually uh, collated was customer relationship information. So we implemented a CRM called Nutshell that um, had a really great import function and integrated with a few uh, key tools like MailChimp and uh, QuickBooks Online. We also decided to move away from the office environment and really double down and invest in the Google Workspace environment so that Google Drive was the only place they were storing their intellectual property, all the files and information that they create through the course of their work. So the key thing to note here is that there is no more manual entry for this uh, organization. There are some imports. So like a second best um, option here is if you can't find an integration, find a nice clean uh, import option. So if you can get information out of a tool in a way that can get imported into another tool, 
that is all, almost as good as an integration. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, so everybody uh, still does their uh, applications in Formstack, and then there's some integrations that bring that information across. So they have full stakeholder information in one place. They've got their full agency uh, intellectual property in one place. The dotted lines are just things they're gonna bring on later. So they've decided that they're not necessarily going to switch to MailChimp right away. They're going to consider it later because Nutshell has a newsletter function. Um, and Slack, they're super invested in Slack. So they're going to try the Google Workplace chat to see if they like it. Um, but they, are, they don't necessarily need to do that now. But the thing I wanted to show you is that with, the, with a little consideration of what is it that we're manually collating and is there a tool that can support that? Um, and where are like where's all my fragmented information and can we just pick one? That, oh no, there's a bit more, so I'm gonna share my screen again. <clears throat> so would you guys like a little bit more help to get there? <laughs> if you do, I have an online course called F Spreadsheets, cause like I said, we all have better things to do with our life than collate and manage information in spreadsheets. And in today's software environment, there's really not a big reason to do so. Um, obviously there's considerations there, but this course is designed based on my exact client method. So we take this information that I basically did with you today, plus a few more um, exercises to find out what you need. The next module is how do you find it? How do you, what software do you use? How do you research and not get overwhelmed? Um, what are some of my hot takes on what's good software and what's not? Then we uh, move into design where I can help you to design effective workflows that are data center and then implement and refine. So how do you get people to adopt your systems and your tools and how do you create a strong process culture in your organization? So there will be a link to a uh, sign up page for my last founding members enrollment. <clears throat> It's a new course, so there's still some bumps in the road. So I'm offering it at a 40% discount. You get lifetime access. There's also a group coaching option add-on that you could do also at a 40% discount. Um, and I just will get some feedback from you along the way about how it was, what you like, what you didn't like, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in improving your own ops chops, <laughs> go ahead and sign up for my founding members course. Um, it's going to be fun. It's great. Um, we've done one more. And like I said, you get lifetime access. So every time I update it, you can join back into the course if you want. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to recommend is you sign up for my newsletter. <clears throat> if you haven't already, it's called Things Done Well. And it's a way for me to talk about processes and tools and stuff that I particularly enjoy. Um, there's a fair amount of SaaS involved in my newsletter. You'll see here we've got you know, someone's house is on fire, so it's fine. Everything's fine here. So um, my previous newsletter was what the F is operations planning anyway. And then I encouraged my newsletter subscribers to stop strategic planning and do operations planning instead. Because <laughs> everybody loves strategy, but not everybody focuses on the off side. And like I said, it's fundamental. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then as a last little reminder, always remember to ask when you're doing any process thinking, any software implementations, remember to ask, what about the cats? Because the last thing you want to do is waste your time and energy bringing cats back when you killed them with your DDT geckos. So that's my presentation. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I do hope that you consider signing up for F Spreadsheets. I'm starting a revolution here. People got better things to do with their life than live in Excel. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sign up for my newsletter. There's also, you can go to my website. My business is called Alignment Ops and alignmentops.com. I have some small packages, coaching packages if people just want to get some one-on-one -on -one support for me as well. Um, yeah, so hopefully you found this useful. You'll get a replay. There's lots of, uh, you'll get a link to the founding members, link to my newsletter and a link to the drawing toast TED talk, which is awesome. So Thanks now so we're going to open it up to, huh? yeah. Thanks so much. That was You're really welcome. spectacular. And uh, like Rachel said, I will, I will absolutely be following up tomorrow. So my process is I'll take 
this recording and I put it onto the city's YouTube page. Sometimes that can take a couple of hours, depending upon how backed up the communication staff are. Uh, and once I have that link, I will also share with you some of the resources that Rachel provided and, and mentioned in her talk. So you should see that email, all things going well by the end of day tomorrow. And if not, you'll see it uh, first thing Friday morning. Um, but if you've got any questions for Rachel, now's your opportunity. Uh, and if you need to take off, that is also totally okay. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, Rachel. And I'm looking forward to the email. <clears throat> and I am going to um, take a look at some of your follow up um, invitations. I'm, I am going to go though, but it was really good to see your face. Nice to meet really everybody. Beautiful. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. I also Bye. wanted to say thank you. You said the uh, the F spreadsheets founding course sign up link will also be included in that email. That was one of those things. Yeah, okay. and it starts Monday, so uh, you have till Sunday night to sign up. So I'll be on it. Do consider it. Thank you so much. This was really really helpful. I'm I have been going through a huge um, for a different project that I'm uh, like doing as a consultant, I've been going through a huge process definition, systems definition, um, and implementing a project management software for this other organization. Um, and it has been incredibly difficult. And I wish that I had seen this webinar like, oh, six months ago. But I got <laughs> um, at the same time, it was super reassuring because I was looking at a lot of what you were saying and I was like, this is how we went about it. We just missed all of this info because there was an additional perspective, right? Yeah, so yeah. kind of as you were talking through what that looks like, um, it was very reassuring to know that I'm on the right track, but also super eye-opening to see just the ways I was on the wrong track. So that's always fun. But you're not um, alone. It's uh, <laughs> no, nobody's born like innately able to necessarily visualize process, right? It really does take practice. I've been doing this for years and years, so it's, it's yeah. second nature to me, but um, it just takes getting in and doing it and, and picturing it, visualizing it really helps. Yeah, I love Drawio. I know you mentioned lucid charts. I use, I guess they call themselves diagrams.net now, but they used to be draw.io. Um, and so I used that for the last breakout room that we did. Um, cool. And it's super helpful. So it, just in case anybody else is still watching, that might be another alternative that's also oh, free okay. if they like that one better. Yeah. Um, and if you use ClickUp, they have a mind map tool that can also, um, like a view, a mind map view that can also be helpful for this too. So awesome. However, however it works and sticky notes work too. Uh, it doesn't have to be in software. So <clears throat> for me personally, productivity apps make me feel like a child in a candy store, get very excited. So the, the, the more websites you talk about, I'm like, Ooh, I need to check that out. <laughs> Click anyway, on my current favorite so project management tool. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I really You're appreciate welcome. it. Um, and I'm looking forward to that follow-up email. Um, and hopefully I'll see you again sometime soon. Yeah, thanks for attending. Yeah, thank you both thank you. for having me as well. I mean, we're going through a thing in our little house where we're having a hard time getting some people on board with some of the new systems that, uh, you know, have been proven to make things easier, but it's all a process. So this kind of it gives me a little bit more understanding as well. And, and I think that I'm going to take more of a look on what you guys send me too, because it might help me figure out a better way to address my management and, and what could help us have everybody comfortably yes, go on to the same page. Definitely. <laughs> and even, even doing some of the activities together can help people to see the importance of it. So I hope, uh, I hope you can, you can get the, the support you need. <laughs>